Good evening, everyone, and a very warm welcome to the Center for the Less Good Idea and to this e evening's presentation of How Showing the Making. Those of you who have been here for these wonderful hows know that this is a series that focuses on process, on how artists come to making, the strategies they use, the approaches they take. And this evening, we are really delighted to have with us um, Marcos, Philip, Ayanda, Tuli and Tejofazzo, who are about to open their concertized version of their album, Ruben T. Kraluza, The B-Side. Uh, that opens at the Market Theatre on the 22nd and runs until the 24th. And we're, we're really, when we heard about this and William offered us this opportunity, we were really, really interested in it interest in it. <laughs> I've just had a very long holiday, so my tongue hasn't arrived. <laughs> but it's still in Greece. I'm here and my tongue is in Greece. Um, <laughs> yeah, we, we were really interested in it because as the Academy, we are interested in process. Um, and this is a work that is doing something parallel to what the, the, the Centre has been interested in over the last while, and that is working with archives. So. I won't speak a lot about the work because these wonderful people will, but what resonated with us is how they've taken the work of Ruben T. Kaluza, which has almost been largely in South Africa sort of lost and forgotten and reanimated, reimagined it uh, and, and brought it to life in different ways through an interdisciplinary and collaborative project. And that really obviously resonates with the center in our approach of this interdisciplinarity and, and what happens when when we come together to to imagine something. So this is uh, something that we we are really interested in hearing a little bit more about. And I'm going to hand you over to I think Philip uh, to Tsejo. And uh, welcome again and have a wonderful evening. Markush Martins, the video designer for this project. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so we decided we're going to talk music together. We're going to try and do it as a sort of standing conversation rather than a sitting one, and talk a little bit about how the genesis of this project, a little bit about Ruben Kaluza, and then also work in with us into this conversation. Really, two collaborators who have sung on our album that been really part of the journey as well. So we hope it's can to kind of all come together in a in a quartet, if you're gonna use musical ter terminology. But firstly just what a privilege and thank you for the Academy to have us here. So it's really lovely that we're here. And yeah, this is a project that does have a long a long birth. Uh, uh, it started really actually at the beginning of COVID because there was a article that I read probably in the first month of COVID by the writer, I'm gonna refer occasionally to my notes just because, uh, which was Tinieko Maluleke. And he wrote a piece around the relationship between Spanish flu uh, in South Africa at the time of that epidemic and COVID. And in that article, he referred to Ruben Tifalusa, uh, and he, he spoke about the song Influenza 1918. And I thought, that's interesting. And I started to look and research um, something around the song and the composer, and I didn't know much about the composer. And at the time, it became a sort of a lovely sort of hunt in an archive, but of course, because of COVID, it was not a physical hunt, but it ended up going as far as Texas University with a musicologist who's probably one of the, the biggest writers or very uh, much a writer who's focused a lot on, on Alusa's work. And um, he, his name is Veit Ullman, mm -hmm. Professor Veit Ullman. And he then, over a series of conversations, found the album 
digitally for us to then send us a digital album. And I'll come to the album. Perhaps I've jumped too soon to talk about the album, but it was discovered in my, in my research that there was an album that um, had been made with his music, and it was called The Double Quartet, Eight Singers. It was recorded in 1930 in London um, by the Zonophone Record Company under the, his master's voice um, label at that time. And in fact, there were over 200 discs made with all his music. And I think there was something like 1,500 songs recorded um, in this archive. But there was this one album that had been very famous. And through, again, through um, a process of trying to find it. I mean, there were physical copies, but there weren't any digital. But we were lucky then to get a digital copy. And then my idea was, when I heard it, it was the song Influenza, I thought, this is an interesting song to maybe rethink it, reimagine it in some way. And it had actually a very specific, um, in a way, connection to here and to many of the people here who have worked with William and who've been part of the production head on the load because that moment was a bad year for, for every, yeah. many, many people. And that was a case where head on the load had got postponed. And people, you know, the COVID was, as we know, it was a very brutal, terrifying moment when it happened and people had lost work and gigs. And suddenly I thought, why don't we learn this song together? And um, that was going to then be the challenge. And Maybe you want to talk a bit about how we started to work remotely with, yeah. with the music. But I think what's also important is to mention that the main reason for you to pick up the song and arrange it was yes. to raise awareness of the situation exactly. that artists found themselves in in 2020 mm -hmm. when we're in hard lockdown without work, uh, theatre's been closed, contracts been cancelled, uh, and you saw an opportunity to raise awareness through this arrangement by releasing the song and uh, well, raising awareness and also collecting uh, donations. And yeah. it did very well. It was received very well. And that helped a lot of um, artists, including myself, um, yeah. and including That's them, I'm well. sure. Yes. Mm -hmm. And uh, that was one of the main reasons why this started. And, and then we started to think well, because we were both discovering Kaluza. You know, I studied music. Um, uh, I'm a Vets alumni. And uh, I studied music, music history. And I think I may have come across the name Kaluza maybe once. So I did not actually know him when mm -hmm. Philip approached, when, when I heard yeah. this song. So I was yeah. discovering him and his music for the first time. It felt like the first time. And we found just a plethora of, you know, this guy was prolific, a uh, prolific writer. And there, were, there was a lot of sheet music. Uh, some of it was in tonic sulfur, uh, and some of it was written in stuff notation. But thankfully, <coughs> some of us can read tonic sulfur because we didn't study music until we were very old. So we navigated those, those uh, sheets very well. Um, uh, so we were discovering this new world of, uh, of, of music and also upon seeing this music and reading the text we realized that man this guy was dealing with topical issues of the day but they were also still relevant to what was going on with us today. Um, so I think both Philip and I see text as you know uh, a very important thing to start before we, we compose music. So the text itself was so strong that, you know, it was very easy to, to be drawn to this, to this music. So then back to how we started. Yeah, maybe we could draw it. I know particularly um, <laughs> <laughs> the two of you were, were part of the very first yeah. recording yeah. of that yeah. song. Yeah, so maybe, it was the first <laughs> we, maybe you want to, I mean, that, I mean, if we all take ourselves back to that moment of COVID, was it a yeah. tough, tough moment? It was absolutely horrible. And I think it's one of the things as, uh, as an artist that kept me sane. Yeah. 
because <laughs> I had actually just gotten a job in finance in February of that year. And then when lockdown happened, I was fired. <laughs> I was let go. So they were just like, thanks, we don't need you anymore. So that, the, when, when Talusa came up, it, it's, it was something that could keep my creativity going, something that could keep me sane, something that could keep me singing, because it was, it was a really dark time, and because, um, you know, lessons were now on Zoom and things were happening, it was the, person, the, the personal connection of the music was cut. And it really, it, it really felt like we were all isolated and alone. So what the project did was it found a common thread within uh, a lot of uh, within the lot a lot of us that are in the project and we really just started doing it um voice recordings on whatsapp it was literally literally that was the process yeah. phil would send um the sheet music maybe a midi uh, a midi track and then we would try and see okay how can we improvise how can we do it how can we you know how can we add our own uh, spin to it and that i think was one of the biggest things during COVID that kept most of us going because COVID was a, a, a horrible time. <laughs> let, me just, yeah. let me just leave it at that. COVID was yeah. horrible yeah. and Talusa really brought us together as, as, as the yeah. group, yeah. I mean, maybe not to be too technical about it, but Tuli mentioned MIDI for those of you who aren't in sort of musical sound. Mm -hmm. So MIDI is really a, a language uh, which allows musicians literally through the, the notes without having to read a note or, or a tonic mm -hmm. sulfur mm -hmm. to, to be guided by it. So it's like you call it a, a guide track, a guide track a, yes. yeah, a piano. And we would send those over the WhatsApps for each part, soprano, tenor, bass. They would record their voices, send it mm -hmm. back. Sometimes we'd send notes back. It was all done through WhatsApp. But what also mm -hmm. became interesting was I think it happened in a very amazing, organic way. It was after we did the first song, there was this interest, let's do another one and another yes. one. Mm. But as it developed, the WhatsApp group became something really special because it was a, com a community yeah. where people were sending messages, how are you, are you okay? We've heard someone's not well. So it became really interesting and maybe Probably we, we've, we're doing things in all different orders, but that's, I think, fine. Maybe we could talk a little bit to the song Udali Mede and then maybe show the video and do something around that. Maybe, but yeah. maybe we can use that as, a, as an example of, of yeah. how we were working. Yeah. Um, do you want to play the song first? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Just the song? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Or rather than sing it. We're playing the old one, right? We're playing the old one. Yeah, let's first, the play, the, first play the audio. Play the old one. So this is the play original the recording one. of Udali Mede 1930 oh, recording. Oh, oh. First. <laughs> I mean, it's not playing. It's fine. There's something happening here. <clears throat> it is playing, but it's not coming out. The song. So let me try it. Let me try once more. <clears throat> we wanted to play the old. Do you want to, yeah. <laughs> let's just talk about how... 1930. Yeah. So this is the recording that... Oh, this is the source material for us. <laughs> so the, 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 the phrase is which basically, correct me, there's no I'm, I'm Tswana. This is, uh, <laughs> but it basically means there's dynamite uh, going off under Mount, under like a mountain, mountains, right? Yeah. yeah, that's that's in the, the phrase, and it just gets repeated like that in call and response. Um, and then, 
Should we do ours before we? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Let's do it. Yeah. Okay. And then we changed it. it. <laughs> and then we changed it. <laughs> so from spoken all the way. Yeah. One, two, three. Wakanda limete panskunda ma wola lela. 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 together very collaboratively and it's a hard always thing how do two composers work together and it, it is a sometimes very difficult to explain other than the fact some of it's intuitive mm -hmm. some of it is just a, a relationship that develops over time where you start to kind of understand what is in each other's heads um, there's a lot of handing over backwards and forwards so for me of course I was Incredibly, I, I loved the, the, the rhythm, even in the original recording. I liked the strangeness of the timbre of that sound of the women's voices. And that was definitely, for me, the first entry point. What was it for you? For me, it was the percussiveness of the phrase, the, the, the clicks and the, from the recording. So the rhythm of the words, for me, uh, gave me the idea, for example, of the gumboots. Um, and then what the actual words mean, you know, like the dynamite uh, exploding. And then, and then it was context of the day as well, because I remember in, the, in our group, in the WhatsApp group, uh, it was a terrible time at, the, at, the, at, at, that, at that moment in, in our country. It was the moment when, um, there was a lot of police violence, and I remember the story clearly when there was a man being dragged out naked of his sh out of his shack in Cape Town. Um, mm -hmm. I don't know if you guys remember that story. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was happening exactly when we were doing this song, mm -hmm. and and so the whole country felt like there was this undertone of like something bubbling, like there was going to be an explosion soon. So it just felt natural that the song started going that direction, like, let's start it, maybe like Sotto Voce, uh, which is like a hushed, half voice, 
speaking it in the rhythm and then building it. Because obviously when we have, we have about 13 singers, um, so it's a lot bigger than the three of us can do it. Uh, and then it just builds and it just builds and then eventually the arrangement explodes into full song with pitches. Yes. So it's, yeah, that's, yeah. that was my... I, I know we're meant to keep visuals, videos separate, but it feels that we have to ask you because there, let, let me talk about what happens also. So there's another process that kind of comes on. So Marcus, we will talk more about the film and the films that were made. But this is such a great example, because this, I think this was number four, number five of the songs we have gone in that order. And Marcus and I would often talk about what could happen visually with this. And I think something, I cannot remember exactly, but I think we'd been saying for a long time, there were two things going on. One was that for a long time we'd been seeing this WhatsApp group, this mm. group, the text growing and growing and growing. And you had been talking a lot in your own work, and I know you will talk about it, but in terms of the scroll, the infinite scroll. Do you want to mention something about that, or do you want to keep it all for no, your no, discussion? No, I, th I think so. Are we going to show the video right now? Yeah. Yeah. Should we show the video, and then maybe... Let's show the video, and then maybe you want to comment on it now, after that. OK. So let's show... Yeah, now we're doing tempo, video. Yeah. So you're watching the whole... And this is the one that the song has to go up, because it's... OK? Sure. Yeah. <clears throat> it starts silent. Hey, Joel. Oh, what's that message? Oh, sorry, you see. <laughs> well, just be quick. Uh, <clears throat> uh, I think uh, just highlight two things. First is the difference in speeds of the scrolling, and I think it speaks to the fact that we consume 
events and experience events through these uh, kinds of new channels of communication. And I think the variation of speed shows the variation of the consumption of events too. So this is one thing. The other thing is the pixel, because the first films, they were sent to us, to me, uh, also cell phone uh, pictures that, that the, the singers uh, filmed mm -hmm. themselves. So they were very low quality, no, not to, no offense, but none taken. <laughs> none low taken. quality in the sense that they had this pixelization. So that was something that just naturally it entered the visuals in a way of just accepting this because this was the material that was there. And in this film, I think the pixelization just became a theme. And just as a technical note, all these en uh, enlarged emojis, they are not just enlarged, they are actually redone pixel by pixel because the enlargement would blur them. So it's actually, you know, a passion for the pixel <laughs> in this case. <clears throat> Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And I think also to speak about the, the how of, 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 of things, um, collaboration is a big thing and who, who you have in your team as well. Mm -hmm. And I think for us, because we are lucky enough to know that we have Abo Ayanda, Tuli, Obam, when you are creating something, sometimes that actually guides you to, to know that, oh man, I have this voice or I have this person who have this who has this skill to to try this. So that's another that's another tool that I said to Lee use. You know who who do I have or what do I have? To, you know you had low low uh, what do you call low low quality pictures to yeah. work with, and you accept that. And so you have to work with what you have and mm -hmm. almost let that guide you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, I'm often interested in low tech. Yeah. Things can ha happen in a very interesting way with low tech mm -hmm. rather than high tech. I mean, we eventually, the story of this project was that we did end up in a studio yeah. for our album. But in fact, so much of it was made just the way we're describing. Yeah. Low tech audio, yeah. we would put it into, into the tracks and lay it up and then yeah. try and fit the speeds. And also we had the issue of, of people's pitch, different, you know, the, mm. the tone and the, the tuning of voices. Yeah. It, mm. Because everyone was in separate, you know, yeah. homes or spaces, um, you couldn't tune to each other. And sometimes you could tune to the keyboard if you had it on the thing, but there was always going to be variation. And we accepted that yeah. as part of it. Mm. I mean, it's a very interesting quality sound in that archive. And I think if we play the next song, which is uh, Idipu, that can also, I think, explain what happens from the archive again, the recording into our process. So, mm. can, can oh, you want the, the original first, the, right? Yeah, the audio, yeah. Sorry, the, the old one, yeah. Maybe I'll talk to you what it conjured up for me about this, this sound. Well, it maybe relates back to a bit of Kaluza's life. We're not going to, I mean, we're trying to talk because this is about the how, not too much about his life, but it is important to know that whilst Kaluza was raised in quite a religious family, a family of preachers, he went to the Achlange Institute uh, in KwaZulu Natal where he studied music and then worked with choral hymns and choral music. 
pretty soon he started to develop a very versatile musical palette where it went from, and I say an interesting, I'm going to call it a protest song, but it was not quite what we think maybe protest song is, but it was choral protest song. It often sounded quite hymn-like. Mm. And then from there, he was influenced by jazz and ragtime. And I stop at ragtime because there's something happening in the song. <coughs> the piano, that what I call the walking bass, doom, 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 doom. All of that's starting to happen. It's like, what's happening? Here is this very sort of, very much what we initially you think is a, a kind of four-part harmony guy. Mm. Very, and what I mean by that is it's very much sort of, church music and yet he starts to really explore and go somewhere else and just talking about going somewhere else he did go somewhere else he went and studied music both at the Hampton Institute uh, that Virginia. Was in Virginia and also at Columbia in America and there he started to also get very influenced by uh, American spirituals, Negro spirituals, and ragtime, Scott mm. Joplin, etc. So maybe now let's go, and let's see if there's something you want to add mm. on this thing. So let's go to the new song. Just the audio. Right? This, this is from the album. Yeah. And maybe can we ask you to sing along? the text, what the song is about, and this whole question of protest and how we were working with that. Yeah. E di poete queen. Loosely, <laughs> um, no, not loosely, it translates to the dipping in ete queen uh, in Durban. And this was the actual dipping of, we're used to dipping of animals, but this was the actual dipping of workers. Um, majority black workers um, by prospective mind employers, mind bosses, uh, mind bosses uh, because of a fear that black people, these black workers were carrying disease. Mm. And so they were subjected to this inhumane practice. So the song itself, it sounds like a hymn, and, but you know, the subject matter is, is quite uh, heavy. And, and for me, you heard the little borrowing of the of the struggle song Senzenina. <laughs> For me it was such a such just a natural borrowing that we needed to put into this because you know it is a, a protest a protest song. Yeah. Yeah, I mean I think it was the I think it was the author and musicologist Vine yeah. Ullman who spoke about what is interesting was that because these songs sounded very much like either, you know, this is more choral and but with the ragtime influence, they, they to the colonialist ear, they good. don't sound like protest, but in fact, the song is a strong, strong mm -hmm. song of protest against mm -hmm. what was going on. Should we play a bit of the video to? Yeah, to let's go. Si 
that instrumentation of also of course is excuse me is part of the process of how we reimagine songs and the choice of instrumentation was very conscious because one double bass connecting to the jazz world felt definitely right also brass we brought in and there's very interesting stuff around Kaluza's work around using a lot of brass he was interested in brass both in terms of jazz bands, but also in terms of military bands here. So there was a strong also connection to brass, which we wanted to bring. And there's an element, I remembered thinking there was something of a dirge that I wanted. It was both a dirge, but it had that sort of almost bluesiness in it as well. And, and I think often you and I, if I'm now going to say for both of us, but I think we wanted to go a little further. We, so I think I had the feeling, oh, I had the feeling that I want, sometimes I, want, I wish Kalouz had gone further. Like yeah, into the rag time and the little more. Yeah. And I think we did that. Well, I, I pushed that way. Yeah. Yeah. And sometimes when I did, I went a little too far. <laughs> <laughs> Forget that people have to yeah. sing the stuff. But we're not, I think it's maybe time to, to, to bring this to at this point to oh, close really? and to give Marco some time because I think we've used up a huge amount of time here, and give you some time to talk about the film work okay. and this project. So over to you. Okay, so let me <clears throat> this is I'm going to show you some sequences uh, using the the interface of the software, one of the softwares that I use, so that it can be more like a, illustrative of the process. And uh, when I was preparing this, I thought, well, something that's almost a common sense is that the technical, the conceptual, and the poetic side of any work, they are woven together, and you cannot really tear them apart and explain just the technical or this or that. But I decided to choose the, a technical line in the hopes that this would bring the poetry and the concepts together because this work as we were speaking it started very limited in terms of of uh, resources and this marks the whole of the 11 movies that we've, we've made all of them even when we already had all the resources they're all a little bit rough and i think it has to do with the genealogy of how, how it was uh, born so uh, so that's why i'm going to just show you and jump some things that I think that have already been, been said. The first one is the first one we did, the called Influenza, that was not uh, shown yet. So I'm going to show uh, the, the original footage and then a little thing that I did and then the final thing. But it's not actually too far from the original. In the end, the other uh, examples I'm going to show to you go much far in terms of color and everything else. This is just, you know, well, this is what I got. Okay, so the first thing was to stabilize this video and to, to get this sense of slow motion. And so here is again, you know, not respecting any kind of resolution, Monia. actually. Yeah, this is the, the, with the audio, I'm gonna play so it. So just to add, we asked each singer in yeah, the yeah. first one to send something of themselves in lockdown. That's what they did with their phones. Yeah. Sorry. 
So this is the the caption came outside the frame for the show now at the market theater because this, it was never meant to be in a theater. It was meant to be consumed online. But then you know the basic thing is just making everything very very slow motion and and a little bit of conversation. <laughs> So now another one is just a kid's playing, and the thing here is just the framing. This is the original song. Now this is just the the framing on the carpet because you know with these uh, little uh, resources we had to. I I thought of of what can I do with this? So one one of the things was just the framing. <laughs> Focus into the center. <coughs> now there's another scene. Let me see what this is. Oh, this is the birthday. Oh <laughs> 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 Quite far away from from the original footage. Now, so this is another piece, and it's called the Island Act. I thought it was interesting to just uh, just show because uh, in, in this one, uh, Philip had this idea of having some. They the singers filmed themselves holding car, cardboard with protest signs against this Island Act, which was an did this disappropriation. Uh, act. I don't know if the word is that, but you know, it was uh, yeah. the music is, is uh, protesting against this. So yeah, the, the land act, yeah, e land act, e land act, e land act. Yeah. yeah. So so uh, and then <laughs> in terms of design, uh, the the interesting thing is that this gave us the idea of asking Azodwa, who works with Philip, to actually write the lyrics and handwritten type and contrast it with very traditional graphic design type. And this is, this is what it came out. This is the typography side of it, like sort of saying, you know, the uh, the professional uh, versus uh, the urgent. So I think that's basically how I could. And now, now it's another example of extreme pixelization, but this time much rougher. The cardboards on top of it, it's like it's a weird combination of paper and glass because it, they look like they're uh, drawn with the finger. Um, well, all these things are kind of uh, also found by chance, and the, I will I will jump these ones here just to talk about chance because we talk about the other things, and uh, this it begins here. Uh, I think this, this was played a big role in, in me and Philip uh, conceiving these movies, just you know, getting surprised by things that would suddenly seem to fit. And this was, we were walking, I think it was in, in Cape Town, yeah, Woodstock, and yeah. we, we passed by a, an antique shop and we entered. And the entering of this shop and uh, finding a heart on it gave us this idea for this love song. 
So I think I'm going to just show the first. It was a red heart like Tell a locket to the box. Yeah, it's a red heart that you... Tell me, do, do, do you love me? Tell me, do, do. Tell me, do, do, do you love me? Tell me, do, do. Tell me, Sammy. Tell me, Jimmy, do you love me? Tell me, Jimmy. Tell me, do, do. Tell me, Sammy, do you love me? things go in different directions and so the heart which as you heard was a sort of complete serendipitous thing then brought me to I became sort of obsessed with hearts looking for hearts and inter- and then eventually of course you come up with the, the the playing cards of the and the heart and why I thought it was interesting and convinced Marcus about it was that in the song of course there are all these tell me Jimmy do you love me tell me do, it's yeah, there are all these different potential suitors or people who uh, uh, that this person singing the song. And I like suddenly this idea of who's loving you, this which card. This, and so that drew us to this idea of picking up cards. Do you love me? Does this card is that card. So there was a sort of language that we developed with that. Yeah, yeah now just two more things. Uh. So this is the... So I just thought of just showing a little bit how, how this was uh, oh done. Because uh, you see, you have all these layers, right? These, all these films, they are full of layers and multiple transparencies and composites and, and stuff. Um, but here, I think this is uh, kind of interesting to show. Let me just get, the, it's the heart six. Heart one, yeah. So we just have to. Here. Just to give a hint of how this is, you know, the, the original and then how I was like manipulating the contrast and the coloring so that they become really very far and usable as in its iconicity instead of the weight, okay? So now the last one is this one that was filmed on the, the very last day that I was in in Cape Town, and we just got in a garage and filmed him. This is him. I am done. <laughs> and the other guy is another guy. But this is, this is just, you know, to, as a final uh, remark that... Uh, just another guy. Pull the line, he said. Another guy. That all these films, I mean, if, if there's something that, that connects them in terms of visual language, is that they, are, they use very economic, although there's very much layered and a lot of post-production and work on them. 
but they use like simple sets of visual concepts that are re-articulated and reorganized differently and that gives some variation to the whole film. But they are actually using always the same language. Oh, would you so just show this one? <laughs> Yeah, and now the last thing is is with the sound, because of course this is inspired by Beckett. But <laughs> the sound uh, it was very challenging because these guys they didn't sing listening to the the recorded music that came only afterwards. So I had to do all sorts of stretching and compressing with the video to the sound. So this is just an example, and this is. Oops. And here is how it really would sound. <laughs> Just this stretching and compressing to have the, the, the lip syncing uh, work. So, yeah, that's it. That's a lot. <clears throat> Um, maybe before we, because I think it would be lovely to have questions from the audience, but maybe just as a kind of final thing from, maybe we, any thoughts or just comment on this process, because this has been a long process, three years, COVID, um, learning the songs, sharing them, then to a point when lockdown was over and then we realized we wanted to make an album and that mm. drew us into a studio and that mm. became a different process again. Mm. We were all together, very yeah. wonderful. Yeah. It was a sort of gathering of us after COVID. It was an yeah. extraordinarily wonderful relief. And then into the phase of starting to think about how do you do something like this live? So yeah. I don't know, maybe... Well, I actually wanna, I wanna add that yeah. by the time we realized that we were going to make an album, the reason was that we felt that the music of this genius, Kaluza, needed to be heard and people needed to, to engage with it. So we wanted to revive this, his archive, re-energize it, reimagine it, and make it a, a living archive, actually. So we partnered with a lot of, a lot of people, um, wiser, Samro. So we actually didn't do this for commercial gain at all. We recorded the album. The main reason why we wanted to record the album was, first of all, to transcribe these songs mm -hmm. and make the sheet music public for free. Um, and also offer our humble arrangements and say, this is our yeah. way of engaging with this archive. Uh, we encourage everyone to add to this archive. Yeah. So that is, and, and that is something that we hope, you know, with this concert will inspire people to, to play this music and do their own arrangements and add to, to this archive because, well, yeah. he deserves to be. Just on a <laughs> historical note, what's interesting was that Palooza was a very successful composer, hit songs, many and he made money out of publishing i mean which is astounding we found letters to publishers around royalties and print music the sheet music was in the early days no. the way you made money arrives today well we don't talk about streaming but other forms of of you know whether it was cds or records his was sheet music and because it was played in the home and then of course also 78s but it's extraordinarily interesting that he really um, was a very successful composer. And in fact, he retired. I mean, he had, and then he went back again into music. So just to talk about the power of, the sh of sheet music, and we felt very you know, clear we wanted that. Ideally, we would have loved to have had a website which you could have put digital audio, like a jukebox where people could have recorded. But we were slightly more ambitious that we could do at the time. 
But yeah, that that's, yeah. was a very important part of this project, was to open this music out now that we had created yeah. it. And in fact, the concert actually will be recorded for the purposes of you know, adding to this archive. So, yeah. Yeah. Nice. I think uh, the one thing uh, as the artists we are very thankful for is the fact that it's been a collaborative effort, mm -hmm. especially in terms of the language, because um, we have a mixture between Isizulunas Tosa, and because there are a lot, uh, there are a couple of Zulu speaking um, people, and then we've got a couple of Tosa speaking people, and then we've got a couple of Tswana speaking people, and then Sisutu. So we are all in one big bowl, and it was never, the project was never a here's the music, sing, and leave us alone. It was a collaborative situation where we were asked, um, sometimes in the group, we would post, now how does one say this word? And the, the, the Tosa version would come out, and then the Zulu version would come out and then we'd say no but in the Zulu version this sounds like you're swearing at someone or in the Kosa version oh my gosh no that doesn't sound right so we 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 had the space to be free with each other and to openly discuss the fact that in my language something doesn't sound the same or something doesn't land the way it's supposed to and in another language it lands as something totally different so that's what we're mainly thankful for with this project is the fact that it was open open, honest, transparent, we could, we, could come, we could come to you and say, this sounds nice um, in this place. How do you, what do you feel? And you invited improv and you guys were really, really open in that, in the sense that explore, be free, do what you, do what you feel is comfortable in the piece because we would rather, say, we would rather have all the, in, in, the, the, the intel and then say, okay, we'll select a couple things throughout the whole album instead of trying to put in, you know, trying to pull things out of people. So I think that that for me was the biggest thing. And you, you just allowed the creativity, which was a beautiful space. Yeah. Ayanda, anything? No, no. Um, <laughs> Ayanda <laughs> sings. <laughs> That's how he talks. He sings. <laughs> yeah. I haven't seen it. Yeah, uh, yeah, I think uh, based on what she was saying, I think for me, the interesting thing to meet this uh, Kaluza person was that he was, uh, some, some lyrics are like against alcohol, say they seem very moralistic. Like don't, don't, don't leave your, your wife in the countryside, she's gonna suffer, you are going to get lost and get arrested, in Johannesburg how is the liquor, so it's like part of him is very conservative, but on the other hand he is fighting for the civil rights against uh, the, the racism. So he's something that we cannot understand today, which is a conservative activist. So this is to me <laughs> the most interesting thing to present it today, because we are used, you are either you know, against fighting or you are reacting. Mm. So I, I like this. Yes. Mary. Yeah, <clears throat> Should we just open it to the audience? Sure, just another song. Can you not see a film or hear it? Yes. Yeah. What else have you got there? Oh, wait, the uh, I can for play anyone with the film, um, yeah. Or we can we choose. Can pull, uh, we'll choose. Oxford Bags. Oxford Bags? Or should we do... No, not Oxford Bags. Okay. He's, he's Let's do the last one, which is the... Yeah. The, the gospel. Okay. Oh. Can yeah, but it's, the it's important to know that yeah. these last few videos, these are what we call scratch track audios. So this is not recorded oh, yeah, in the yeah, studio. No, these are cell phone recordings. Uh, Oh, so you don't want to show it? Right, okay. No, you can show it, but it's important to hear. This is me saying I'm low tech, but then. <laughs> okay. Why am I just. Because I'm just saying it's nice. working. Nice. So when he was in America. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Just quickly, when Kaluza was living in America at, and at the Hampton Institute, they, one of the things he was commissioned to do was to take um, African American spirituals and translate them into. Uh, some of the Nguni languages. Yeah. Now, we don't have any trace of those. As far as we know so far, we haven't found them. No. They, I hope maybe someone will. So we did our, we chose one together, a, a spiritual that both we loved, and then we thought, let's do what we imagined Kaluza would have done. So. Can I move it Can go? You're <laughs> 
Something to say about the video making. Yeah, I can just, just uh, <laughs> say quickly how, how I did this, these uh, cardboards uh, painted with gouache. I thought it was interesting because I put a tripod with a time lapse uh, setting, and I actually did these paintings sort of uh, at the time. So it, it's all like filmed in the sequence <laughs> that I was making, and then I just removed my hand and put their hand, their hand. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, but it was yeah. all filmed like that. Yeah. The, the, the tonic sulfur thing, maybe just to reference mm -hmm. that, we did find some of the sheet music, which so that those the letters which are all a tonic sulfur score are superimposed on that, which I was pleased that we managed to, to get that that other kind of another layer of archive into it. And singing it in terms of playing with the translation, how was that? <laughs> this one was fun. It was this fun. one. Yes, this one was. was a very fun track. Yeah, the mm. up, the change in tempo was a very was a welcome change because some of uh, some of Dalisa's songs are um, a, a, a little a little slower mm. and they have they have lessons there, so they're heavy songs. Mm. Yeah. So this one was a lighter a, a lighter yeah. version of him that we really really enjoyed. Yeah, yeah. and this 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 also um, highlights the importance of collaboration because there was a back and forth about. Yeah. What is the best way or the most poetic way to translate this sentence, for example? So that wasn't just like one person saying, I'm going to say, I want to go to heaven and say it in this way. So it went back and forth. I asked Ayanda, I asked Bama, you know, I asked. Yeah. yeah. And I kept on saying, I want to go to heaven if I die. If <laughs> 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 um, I mean, yeah, I, it's been a wonderful process for all of us, yes. and um, yeah, I hope you will enjoy the concerts um, coming up. Maybe questions, comments.
comments. Mm. Otherwise, we just keep playing movies. There's a hand. Um, uh, 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 the last video that you showed with the um, uh, the cardboards, the, the coloring, is, was that intentionally referring to the old Republic flag? It is for, sorry for? Was that intentional choice to kind of use the color scheme? Yeah, the, yeah, because you know, we, we used, I got these photographs of these gospel people singing, so that comes from the dress, the gowns. All the colors come from these uh, gowns that people sing. And the church. No, the, there's, the, there's the orange, blue, and yeah. greenish. They come from from um, outfits Beautiful. that uh, people, people use at the masses singing, when they're singing. OK. Interesting. <clears throat> Just to add to that, Haifa, um, mm -hmm. it's, it's kind of interesting because sort of like thinking about like reimagining, there's something about like repositioning yourself like from then to now. And so when you use the colors of like the Republic flag or sort of like reference to it, it feels like what is then the journey from then to now? And I wonder sort of like how you played with that internally in a way. I don't know. Is that a thing? Wow. If not, let it go. <laughs> Is that for me? I think so, yeah. <laughs> you know, I'm a Brazilian. <laughs> so, you know, the, from then to now, to me, it's like I am kind of ignorant, you know, of, of I, learning. But I wouldn't say I would have uh, the possession of that intention, intentionality of, you know, trying. But I think the whole of, of this group of movies, the contrast between the sonority, the sound, and the t even, even if you do all the arrangements, it still maps back to the beginning of the 20th century. So, you know, the Dali Medi with the scrolling and the emojis, so all these signifiers of contemporary culture, of course, they play with this contrast of something that's obviously not contemporary, but rendered in a contemporary way. But I wouldn't go f as far as to say that, you know, symbolically, it's meant to be understood like this or that. It's much more a, a crash of, of eras rather than, you know, some historical... Of course, people can read, and they would not like it, but the kind of connection that can be made, but it was not intentional, you know, this, to be honest. Uh, first, I'd like to say thank you so much for this amazing project. Um, it's really moving. I, I saw the development of it because it was mostly online. And I watched it from the hospital bed, sick with COVID, 60% infection rate. Yeah. Left lung was gone. <laughs> and I have a story to tell and then a question. A story is, as I was watching this project developing online, we had an email from, from the office that, you know, this project is also dedicated to your collaborators whom were experiencing the devastation of COVID. And I was one of the beneficiaries of this project. That on the day I was released from the hospital, I had a prescription list. And I went to the chemist to buy medication. It was so expensive. the amount that was needed mm. wow. for my medication to survive COVID. And I, I was very, very grateful. This project has saved my life. So thank you. Now, um, I, my question is, as a composer myself, and I want to ask, a question about the business model that you used. <laughs> Who consumed it? The, how, how was it consumed? 
And how were you able to help so many people? Because I wasn't the only one. Consumed it. So the question is, who consumed it and? How did you make money with it to help all the people? Yeah. Well, I mean, let me start by saying, as you, we all were aware, we, we, the state didn't exactly help artists very well at that time. And I knew that there were many initiatives starting to happen, it wasn't the only one, but I knew that there was a family of people that I cared about who I've worked with for 20, 25 years. And really what that brought home to me was that I couldn't do big things, but I could do small things. And that was to try and help. So in terms of how do people consume it, what are you talking about people who, who the music or the, the because what happened was we literally, we started a Kickstarter. There's a South African version of a Kickstarter thing. I've even, I think it was called Busker, B-U, Busker, Q-R or something. And so we, we, we joined up with this sort of, uh, uh, into, uh, it was a, a format, a, a software format. And then we just, we, you know, we just hit social media. Um, someone asked me the other day, I was giving a talk about my Shaka soundtrack and the young, Composer asked me, "Are there algorithms for your success?" And I said, <laughs> "I said I don't know about algorithms, but you kind of have to just make it up a bit." So it was a bit of a making it up and just lots of sort of getting the, the it out on social media and then asking people to donate. I hope I'm answering you in the way you're you, you're asking me. And people donated whatever they wanted to. You know, mm -hmm. is is that the answer? Is that what you're it's asking more? It was yeah. through yeah. donations. Because the consumption of the music, sorry, that's why maybe I'm, was free. So anyone yeah. could listen to it, anyone could watch the videos, anyone could... The shit um, music was the sh It was all there, well, yeah. so that was, there was no commercialness in that. It was the commercial part came from basically us saying, can you help, can you help? Uh, yeah. Very nice. Why do you think um, he remained unknown and, and it takes until 2020, so far into our democracy and celebration of South Africans who have been muted, for us to know about him and for, for Witz and your education not to have foregrounded a composer like this? Such an interesting Do you want yeah. to answer it too? Maybe you were a Witzy mm. or you two were Witzy. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't know who sets the curriculum, you know. Mm, uh, that's the thing. But there's so many, like Kaluza. Um, and to be fair, there are some songs, like yeah. Ikle Guana, yeah. that, is, that was still part of the choral scene there, there to this day. Ways. But there are a lot of songs that were not known. So. Yeah, maybe it's a little unfair to say he was completely unknown. Yeah. He just was not in the foreground, as, as you say. And why? That's a... I'm not sure, but actually I want to mention that we have um, Tembela Vokwana, who is uh, uh, an academic and uh, a serious uh, person to, to speak to about Kaluza as well, who is actually writing comprehensive uh, program notes for us uh, that are going to be over, they're over 3,500 words. <laughs> and he deals with <laughs> yeah. So, you know, as we said, this is to add to this archive. We want people to learn about Kaluza and to engage with his work. So we try to get, you know, the best team we could to, you know, to, to achieve that. And he deals, he deals with that actually as well. So. The notes will be available yes. <laughs> online. <laughs> yeah. So I, I hope, yeah, it, it's a, a, does anyone mm -mm. want to answer that? It's mm -mm. a, I don't know why. It's loaded. It's, lo it's loaded. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, sorry. Um, I'm, I'm fascinated by the, um, the kind of notion of, of return and things echoing in the past and mm. and you kind of interpreting those things. Um, so the notion that um, 
the, the, the idea of disease being kind of embodied by black people, um, I'm kind of referring to, um, I'm referring to, 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 the, um, to the dipping song mm -hmm. and how that for me was kind of almost repaid back in, um, in uh, lockdown and, and what wow. disease means wow. and how, how this kind of uh, inherent infrastructure of separation keep replaying themselves. So it's almost like a response to you to say, um, there's a there's a structural reason why certain things are not exposed, or there's a kind of um, so it's it's so so yeah. So my, my, my comment is also on how I, I, I enjoy the way that this was such a a personal thing for each one of you that like it, it became something that that emerged from reality and then created something else. But there's a kind of almost historical weight that for me is is hard to. Um, yeah, thank you. I think that's basically. No, um, can I, uh, thank you. Maybe can I ask because it's such interesting things you're saying. You know, when we released an influenza song, which the words I, I, I'm going to praise you them, were basically saying part of the problem with why you got Spanish flu is that you've been running around in the cities, womanizing, and drinking. So you know, and we all know that with the HIV pandemic. There were similar kinds of, of ways in which you were looking at HIV AIDS contraction, which was exactly the same thing. You deserved it. And I remember one particular person responded to the video online and wrote and said, I really don't like this. Why are you putting this up? This is making it look like we are being blamed, that we have to be, you know, we, we have to take some responsibility for this. And, but I think it goes back to what Marcus is saying. It's complex because he was, I quite love this idea of this conservative activist, that, the, that you can't just look at it in terms of, oh, he was a conservative moralist Christian because he was also, so it, it, there's a constant tension that also goes for, for this. And the, the politics, I think, and the heaviness of some of the, the politics that were going on, what I, th I find very interesting has always been that they are kind of almost, um, they come through the music and the song. And so when you, the, the weight of this, of the colonial empire and the beginnings of apartheid laws, I feel like it all, you can find it all within his music, actually. I've, I've, it's, for me, it is there, the, the, the big, so yeah. All right, so I think that's it. No, no other pressing questions, comments? Yeah, okay, so with that, I'd just like to thank you all again for coming to share with us uh, the depth, the, the background to this really rich project. Um, it's, it, it moves in so many directions in terms of what it's done, as, we've, as, as the comments and the questions that have surfaced from the audience uh, evidence. Um, so thank you for doing this work of, of digging into the archive and of bringing it back into the contemporary moment. Thank you for what it did for artists during the pandemic. Thank you for sharing with us uh, these, these processes you've undertaken. And thank you all for engaging with it so, so thoroughly. And I encourage and invite you all to visit the Market Theatre where we'll see the concertized version starting on for uh, Saturday. Saturday. Saturday and Sunday matinee. Uh, there we go. Um, and also to remind you that we have our 10th season at the centre opening on the 18th of October. It's a great celebration for us to mark the 10th season so we hope to see you all, those of you that are based here, to back here in the centre. And if you are around, we also have currently an exhibition on Moments of Making, which features these moments of making from season five to season 10. So there's lots to engage with, and we hope to see you all very soon. Thank you all very, very much. Mm.